Welcome back to the ADSA Scientific Meetings. Uh, joining me today as co-host is Dr. Marco Sinobi. Uh, Marcos is a technical service manager at uh, Balchem Corporation. And there's a theme here. We've got a bunch of University of Florida people here. He got his uh, PhD there at the uh, University of Florida. Uh, also joining us is Dr. Jose Santos and uh, Marina Marino. Marino. I got it. I know. I know. That's close <laughs> enough. All right. Jose, I'm not sure you need an introduction, uh, but uh, why don't you just tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a professor at the University of Florida, uh, where I conduct research and extension primarily, and do some teaching, All right. primarily with dairy cows. Okay. And would you also then introduce your uh, student, yeah. student, please? And Mariana is a second year PhD student. Uh, she completed her master's degree at the University of Florida. She's originally from Brazil. She completed uh, her veterinary degree in Brazil, came for an internship. We retained her for uh, graduate school, and now she's halfway through her PhD program. And I'm sure she's gonna tell what she's doing. Yeah, very well, yes, and well, great segue. Uh, Marina, we're gonna, uh, would like to have you talk a little bit about your talk. I understand you're gonna give a presentation tomorrow. Give us kind of an overview of what the presentation will entail. Well, the presentation tomorrow, we're going to talk about feed efficiency. We have been working with feed efficiency throughout my master's, where we have explored some important questions. Uh, the way that we check the feed efficiency in dairy cows is through residual feed intake. And residual feed intake is a way of measuring feed efficiency, where we account for important energy sinks, such as uh, milk production, uh, if the cows are losing or gaining weight, uh, the maintenance requirements for these animals, and we account for the cohort they inserted. Uh, so the, the, some of the important questions we have explored before that led us to this uh, present project here was uh, if selecting for these animals, what, it's a problem because now we are selecting for animals that eat less to produce the same amount of milk and no differences in uh, energy or body uh, energy change. And for this uh, study now, we are seeing what makes those cows more efficient than the other ones, because that's a, one of the important questions one to see. Oh, interesting. So can you tell a little bit more about what you are going to present tomorrow? Sure. Um, so for this, for this study now, we have enrolled 117 cows. Uh, we, we, we checked them for 140 days, and they entered in a study with around 61 days uh, postpartum. And throughout this, uh, this time, we have checked them for, in two periods, for uh, feces, uh, urine, we have collected feces, urine for total tract digestibility, ruminal fluid, so we could check the microbiome diversity, as well as some uh, factors in uh, uh, ruminal fluids, just pH, ammonia concentration, short chain fatty acids. And we have done hepatic tissue collections for uh, assess mitochondrial respiration, and I'm going to talk a little bit more of these results. I'm just talking about what we have done for this study. And uh, with all this together, for 140 days, we have daily dry mat intake, milk yield, milk composition twice a week, body condition score, activities, some behavior traits that, that were important for us to check. And um, what we, what we hypothesized was that more efficient cows, the ones that I was mentioned before, that those ones that eat less to produce the same amount of milk, uh, we hypothesized those, those animals, they improved uh, nutrient digestibility, so that's why they can eat less and produce the same amount of milk. And previous studies we have showed that uh, even though they're eating less, there's no detrimental effect in health or reproductive performance or, or uh, body condition score chains. So that's why now we, are, we want to see what makes them more efficient. And we hypothesize that nutrient digestibility would enhance, mitochondrial respiration would be bigger or greater for those animals too, uh, chains in microbiome uh, diversity, as well as behavior. And this is based on our studies and others too. Um, so I have a question. Yeah, sure. Um, you will explore, or you explore actually, uh, mitochondrial yeah, uh, right. respirations. Have you read about that in other species that this could be a possible cause of feed efficiency? Yeah, well, uh, there's some beef cattle studies that they have done that, checking residual feed intake. 
they did see uh, respiration like we did, which is uh, how much of oxygen being consumed linked with ATP production. And they did see differences where more efficient cows, they have a greater link to, with ATP production. They also uh, see differences with some gene expressions with genes that being related with antioxidant uh, activities for in the liver tissue for beef cattle. I'm not aware of no one that have done this in dairy cattle. Um, and also the poultry, I, I know the microbiome uh, they have done in, in gut, but I'm not sure about the mitochondrial respiration. I know more of the beef cattle. And that was one of the reasons we decided to, to see if that would be uh, true as well for dairy cattle. So say, I know you guys have been uh, profiling the, the genetics you heard for quite some time now. Do you see any genetic similarities uh, in, in, in understanding what, what traits or genetics impact uh, feed efficiency? Yeah, so this is a, a, a component of a collaborative effort with multiple universities that are part of the national evaluation for uh, feed efficiency. So in terms of national evaluation, the trait is called feed saved which is expressed as pounds of feed that you save per lactation on a given cow. So one of those uh, components that make feed saved is what Mariana just mentioned, uh, uh, residual feed intake. So uh, given that a cow will produce the exact same amount of energy corrected milk, she'll have exactly the same change in body tissues. Some cows eat less and some cows eat more. So this trait is already available. So we genotype cattle. Anybody who genotypes cattle will get a breeding value for that. Okay. So they have that. When you buy semen, you can select for sires that result in progeny that is superior for uh, feed efficiency. I guess what's really interesting is what makes this cow produce the same amount as this cow, but this cow eats five, six pounds less feed. Right. So that's still a lot, there's still a lot of unknowns uh, to that. So we know very little about the exact mechanism. So we are exploring, Marianne is exploring some of them, uh, but to be uh, really honest, uh, we have hypotheses, but it's not very easy to uh, uh, confirm those hypotheses right. with real data. Right. So. Yeah, but uh, the information is already available. People can select for that. There are genetic and genomic markers for that available today. And there is a good agreement between uh, genetically superior animals for feed efficiency. And when we measure intake, they are actually, they save feed. So it's, a, it's an important improvement that's been, or it's, a, it's an important, I should say, uh, uh, development in the genetics world. So coming back to the results that you will present tomorrow, um, I think that you have pretty exciting results. In results. Yeah. Well, we have some results that I think we can we can talk about. Like Dr. Santos started talking about that we see the relationship. One of our goals was were to see if in fact the cows that we are call we are calling more efficient based on their residual feed intake measurements at the farm when we look at their genomic breeding value, if in fact they're more efficient. And we see an agreement with that. We did see a correlation, so, which is a good point because in fact the cows we're calling efficient, they're, they are being selecting to be more efficient. Uh, efficient. So that's the first point and we checked it, we could see this. Another point was, okay, what makes those cows more efficient and all the things that I have mentioned before, all the collections we have measured. and. Uh, we have seen a major uh, results was that uh, more efficient cows, they have improved rumination per kilogram of dry mat intake and kilogram of NDF intake. They have improved some factors related with ruminal digestibility, such as microbiome diversity differs where they have a less diverse microbiome, which could, means that they have a, uh, could mean that they have a, micro, a more homogeneous microbiome. We did see that more efficient cows, they had lower pH and more concentration of ammonia nitrogen, which could, uh, which could suggest that more fermentation or more digestibility could be happening in ruminal, but we didn't see difference in total tract digestibility or the mitochondrial respiration with those groups. 
So with we have so far, we suggest that more of the ruminal digestive, or maybe the site of digestion would make more uh, important, it would play a more important role for uh, differentiate more efficient cows and least efficient cows than the other factors based on our results. And in fact, other professors, and I saw a lot the, in the ADSA, uh, they talked about microbiome composition, they did see uh, pretty uh, uh, different differences in uh, high differences in low and, and high residual feed intake cows regarding to microbiome. So I think it's something that we could explore, and then that's where our results were going towards. Too. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, you mentioned pH pH in the rumen, but also yeah. you have higher butyrate, right? Concentration. Do you have any speculation of that? Yeah, well, um, so we had different periods of collection and the butyrate, actually, when we look at the uh, the two periods where we have collected, we didn't see more differences. It's just, uh, we have an interaction and it, it wasn't a, a very big of a difference. So the short chain fatty acid concentration, we didn't see a big of a differences. However, um, we didn't measure production, which could very well uh, differentiate among the animals. So we know the concentration, but we don't know we don't know how much they actually produce, which would be nice to see. So we we could see if the the residual fitting take I have differences or that. Mariana, you've got a couple years left with your PhD. Are you going to continue to uh, pursue this line of uh, study? Well, I would like to. I really like this uh, feed efficiency and all the studies I have been doing throughout my program. I think they're very relevant, and that's one thing that I would. I would enjoy to keep doing and, and contribute somehow, yeah. So when you do graduate in a couple of years, what's your plans? <laughs> Work for Biochem. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. <laughs> well, correct Done answer. deal. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, she can be in sales too. You see how she just asked for that order? <laughs> well, listen, I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate you guys joining us today. This has been fun.